Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros, and today we're going to be doing a brand new $250 sort of kind of gaming PC. Let's get right into it, shall we? But first, a word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by GVG Mall, an online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys and more specifically Windows 10 licenses. So if you guys use the link in the description down below, type in code TB20, you'll get 20% off your Windows 10 Pro activation key, and then you just take the key that they give you, you type into the Windows 10 activation, and that's it, you have Windows 10 activated. We use GVG Mall to buy the Windows 10 keys for a lot of computers, like all of these computers we use GVG Mall, and it's a very helpful resource that you can use today by using the link in the description down below, and also using code TB20 at checkout to save 20%. So let's continue this video. All right guys, so as Jackson mentioned, this is a kind of sort of gaming PC because it's gonna be able to play games now while also looking really nice, um, but also be able to be upgraded really easy in the future. You could upgrade the CPU, the RAM, the GPU. All of this is gonna be extremely upgradable, so if you're shopping around the holiday season, your budget's $250 and you only wanna buy new parts, this might be the build for you. Big thanks to AMD for sending over the Athlon 3000G. That actually has APU integrated graphics on it. So we're gonna test this thing out and push it to its limits. It can actually overclock a little bit. So we're gonna look into that when we do go into the benchmarks, but let's go ahead and talk more about the specs. All right, so as we mentioned, Athlon 3000G, this is a dual core, but it threads to four cores. So, you know, we got that going for us and we're gonna pair that with the Wraith Stealth Cooler. Now, normally this processor would probably come with like the standard Athlon coolers, which is like, half the size of one of these. This is a 35 watt processor, so normally it would come with a really, really small cooler and you're probably not gonna wanna overclock at all on that. We're gonna, we're gonna try it with this though, cause this is like, it's like giant compared to that one, right? For the motherboard, we went with the trusted and tried and tested B450M HDV Revision 4. So we've, we've used this so many times. It's a micro ATX motherboard, but you know, we've never really had an issue with one. They kind of look nice. They have like a nice white and black color scheme going for them. From our friends over at Team Group, we have the T-Force Delta RGB RAM. This is just an eight gig kit and it's 2666, which of course, as many of you may know, Ryzen really likes fast RAM. So this is a little bit on the slower side, but it is within our budget. It made it to where it's cheap. It still has RGB on it. And you can get one of these kits around 45 bucks, but it's hard to even find AK kits nowadays anyways. Now for the SSD, we went with a 256 gigabyte normal two and a half inch SSD from Team Group once again. This is a very affordable option. You can go with a wide range of 240, 256 gig SSDs, more than enough to get Windows installed, have it run nice and snappy, and you can always add a hard drive in the future if you want more storage for games. What about Fortnite, will it fit? No, no Fortnite. Fuck. As for the power supply, we went with the most affordable option right now that's readily available. This is the Thermaltake Smart Series 500 watt power supply. We use this thing a ton in our budget builds right now because you can easily get it for around 40 bucks, which sadly is the going price for a 500 watt power supply. Now we could have opted for something with way less wattage, but again, the concept of this build is it's gonna perform really well now. And also with this beautiful motherboard and power supply combo, you can upgrade it really easily with a graphics card and even a higher end CPU if you wanted to, which stay subscribed because we are gonna have a video where we do upgrade this thing a little bit and show what kind of performance you can get by doing that. Now we actually went with this case, the Matrix 30, because one, it looks really nice, and two, it's actually very affordable. Normally we would go with something like the Rosewell FBM series, which is like a really cheap case that you can get on Amazon, uh, but this looks really nice and it comes in around the same price point, if not a little bit more, and the fact that this system is gonna be upgradable with the GPU, you can add some RGB if you want some RGB glam, uh, you can make this thing actually look really nice for a budget new parts build, which just normally is not very possible. So um, how about we go ahead, put this thing together, which will take like two seconds, and then show you what kind of benchmark results we get.
All right, guys, so now that we've got this system up and running, as you can tell, we have the Athlon 3000G here with the Vega graphics. I actually went ahead and overclocked this thing a little bit. Um, right now, it normally boosts up to about 3.5 gigahertz. That is the base speed for this processor. Uh, but I managed to get it all the way up to about 3.9. If you run an IDA64 stress test, which I'll open up here real quick, um, you get around 3.8-ish. Uh, gigahertz, it's not exactly 3.9, um, which is normal for an overclock like this. Um, if we go here and run a stability test, with this Wraith Stealth Cooler, it is definitely more than enough to be able to keep this thing running nice and cool. Uh, we really only peak around 40-ish degrees Celsius. Uh, we can run this a little bit more if we want to, but um, getting about 3.87, which is practically 3.9 gigahertz, it's pretty rock solid, 41 degrees Celsius. This is a 35 watt CPU, so I mean, it's working fine. Um, we also got the RAM running at the rated 2666, for some reason 2667, whatever. Um, it's running at its rated speed, so that works really well. You do have to keep in mind with a system like this, this APU will use dedicated RAM for its VRAM. So as you can tell, there's hardware reserve 2.1 gigabytes of VRAM. So in theory, we only have about six gigs of usable system memory in this. So when you see the benchmarks, keep that in mind. If you do wanna get actual uh, full eight gigs of RAM, you probably wanna get something like 12 gigs or 16 gigs just so you have enough usable memory. But um, just for the sake of this budget build, this is perfectly fine. And we're gonna go ahead and do is test games like Fortnite, potentially CSGO. For some reason, we're having a lot of issues with CSGO, but we're gonna test a couple other esports titles and show you what kind of forms you get and what you can expect. All right, guys, so of course, the first game we have to test is Fortnite. Now, one thing I have to mention, keep in mind, MSI Afterburner, for some reason, has this issue with the uh, GPU usage. It just gets stuck like that. Don't know what to do there. Kind of been something we've been dealing with for a while. But we are running on all pro settings on DirectX 11. I actually tried to launch it on DirectX 12, and I was getting significantly less performance, even on the menu. So I don't know what's up there, but we are running the Vega 3 graphics, running off the integrated graphics that are clocked to 1600 megahertz. So there was a slight overclock to those graphics so um, we're gonna go ahead and load up a team rumble and just kind of see what kind of performance we get all right guys so now we are in fortnite on pro settings 1080p uh, right now the frame rate is not ideal we're getting around 30 to 40 ish fps we'll see what we get when we actually drop and settle in a little bit um, keep in mind i didn't find any official drivers yet for the 3000g um, amd sent this over without real instructions on like what to do in that situation so we're kind of just running with the windows drivers but everything showed up fine so i don't know if i'd really directly correlate um, the drivers to be the issue, but um, we'll probably run around a little bit, see what kind of firmware we get as we settle things in, and then probably drop it down to 720p to get a better idea um, of what kind of frame rate we get overall. Uh, but things are kind of settling in around 40 to 50 FPS. Um, we actually have to get in a battle to see a, a better idea of what kind of frame rate we get in an intensive situation. But for Fortnite, it's it's okay. I mean, we definitely have built used PCs that will perform better than this, and which was to be expected from the beginning of this video. But just kind of as far as like a office PC that looks really cool and also can be upgraded in the future, I mean, can't really complain too much. Let's get some more uh, materials and see if these guys come back in. Um, probably this would be a good time to go ahead and drop the resolution down the 720p and see what kind of performance we get. So let's go ahead and do that. Maybe not, let's just do 1600 by 900. Let's give it a little bit of a better shot um, because there are some good value 1600 by 900 monitors. So, okay, here we go. We're getting closer to that 60 FPS mark, around 50-ish, not a significant upgrade, but it does feel a lot smoother overall. Um, no crazy stutters, so it looks like 1600 by 900 might be the uh, the ideal resolution for this setup. Um, we'll probably test that with the other games as well, but let's get some shield and see if I can find somebody else to fight. All right, here's the guy. This is it. He's the one. Oh, build. Oh, that was too easy. Too easy to do it to him like that. But yeah, I know 50-ish FPS, uh, just for laughs and giggles. Let's drop it down to 720p and see what kind of the maximum potential is, because I wouldn't really recommend going below 720p with a setup like this. But yeah, if you really want to run 720p, look at that, 70 FPS. So, you know, 720p is not something I would recommend. I mean, it doesn't look all that good, um, especially if you're running on like a native 1080p monitor. But um, I mean, it does the job. You, you can ideally see a situation where someone with an office PC might have an old 720p monitor and you could definitely play games on it. Is CSGO. I do have to note, however, I had to drop the clock speed down just a little bit. We were getting some stability issues when trying to launch CSGO, so I tried dialing the overclock back a little bit and 
we're good here. So 3.8, you really shouldn't see that big of a difference. The actual GPU clock speed is the same too. So really not gonna notice that big of a difference, but we're gonna run CSGO on Pro Settings 1080p, and we're gonna dive into uh, Dust 2 and see what kind of performance we get. All right, guys, we are in a team deathmatch mode on CSGO, and right now we're getting around 100 FPS on Pro Settings 1080p, which was kind of to be expected. Uh, it doesn't make me any better of a player, so you know, that's basically the same thing as well. But yeah, guys, I mean, performance is well playable for CSGO. This is definitely smooth, and again, it's CSGO. I kind of expected this too. Uh, but on integrated graphics, it's really cool to see how far we come on a $50 processor. Um, you can just launch CSGO and have a pretty good experience playing it on pro settings. So I don't know, man. I mean, there's really not a whole lot to complain about, uh, especially for this build. Um, we're probably gonna test one more more demanding game to show kind of the limits of this processor because again, this is not gonna play your AAA titles. All right, guys, the last game we are going to be testing today is Rainbow Six Siege. Now, just launching the game up, it's obvious this is going to have to run at 720p, uh, which is kind of disappointing, but, you know, kind of what you expect with this APU. This is probably where we're going to see that this system is really held back in newer titles that are more graphically demanding. So what we're going to do is run this built-in benchmark and kind of get a good idea of what kind of numbers we can get. Keep in mind, you can see the results up here in the top left corner, and then we'll end this thing with some average. But honestly, on first impressions, around 70 to 80 ish FPS on 720p low settings, not too shabby for a game like Rainbow Six Siege. Now, is it ideal to play in 720p? No, not really. You're probably not going to have a great experience. Um, it's not going to be the most high quality. But if you're just casually playing a game like Rainbow Six, which I don't know who really casually plays Rainbow Six, uh, you most definitely can. Uh, probably could bump this up to 600 by 900 as well, because if you're around the 90-ish FPS mark, you'd probably be closer to 60, around 1600 by 900. So um, this is definitely more than playable. I'm actually genuinely surprised. The menu seems to be more demanding in this game than the actual uh, benchmark does. but as this run wraps up, we'll get an idea of exact numbers of what we're working with, um, and then we can go from there. And it looks like we have an average of 84, a minimum of 64, and a max of 110, which is actually very impressive. You know, just for fun, I'm gonna go ahead and run this benchmark again, actually, but we're gonna try it 1080p, because I'm thinking the results are gonna be a lot worse, but that menu is really demanding for some reason, so I don't know why, but um, as you can tell, they are, pretty worse so we're looking at like 39 to 40 ish fps which makes sense because you're literally doubling the resolution up to uh 1080p so yeah this wouldn't be nearly as playable 30 ish fps we'll let the run continue but yeah i wouldn't recommend doing this um probably going 720p would be your best option if you want to play this game um but yeah even with explosions and things like that we're still looking around 39 to 40 ish fps which you really want to be at 60 for an FPS title like this, especially the competitive nature of this game. Um, as we go outside, this will be the less demanding section, which is gonna be close to 50 FPS, not exactly there yet. Um, but yeah, again, 1080p is definitely pushing it with this little APU, but overall, I'm actually really impressed with this app one, and it's doing a lot more than I thought it would with its Vega 3 graphics. And again, this is a $50 processor, getting an average of 42 FPS, a minimum of 35, and a max of 53 pretty damn impressive. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up real quick and uh, talk about what we saw. So you guys just saw some really epic benchmarking. And as you can tell, for like 1600 by 900, 720p level, this thing will play the games, you know, lower settings and everything, but it's a $250 all brand new gaming PC. I mean, this is all brand new parts. You can go use our links down below and you can buy this right now. But the intended purpose of this is the fact that you will be upgrading it down the road. And we did plan the PC build around that concept, upgrading it down the road. It's a nice looking case that could actually do well with some extra RGB, uh, maybe a new graphics card in the system, which stay subscribed because we'll be doing an updated video of this very soon. Uh, but that was the main focus behind this build is decent performance now. It can be used for things like school, office tasks, whatever things you might want to do that are not gaming. Um, and eventually you can upgrade this thing super easily with even a processor if you really wanted to uh, without any problems. And this could be your PC for the first foreseeable future with easy upgrades and uh, just overall pretty decent performance for the money. And if you guys decide that you actually just really want the best bang for buck, we'll do a couple links of like other builds that we've done in the past. Like if you go with Ryzen first gen or Ryzen second gen, you can definitely get a little bit of a better build for this price range. So check in the description down below. Or, or around. Yeah, just like somewhere, somewhere around there. Yeah. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.